Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a video I have never done. I don't even know if this video will see the light of day, but I'm going to react to Miss Americana Taylor Swift, which is the Netflix exclusive documentary about Taylor Swift. I've never reviewed or reacted to a film, so I'm not even sure how this works, but apparently it is a thing because it has been requested that I do it. Here's the thing, Taylor Swift is such a polarizing artist. You have the people that hate her and the people that love her and there isn't a whole lot going on in between. Usually you don't see a whole lot of that. I don't want to watch this documentary and feel like it's like a pity party thing, but I think that some of the things that are going to be addressed here just based on the trailer alone, they need to be addressed. But what I really want to see from this documentary is I really, really want to see more of Taylor's songwriting process. One of the reasons I'm watching it now is actually because my 10 year old is so excited. She has not shut up about it all week. So I need to make sure that this is, you know, 10 year old friendly before I let her watch it after school today. Oh, I love that we're starting with the piano scene and the kitty cat. And it says, my life, my career, my, my dream, my reality. The fact that Taylor Swift was a journaler that early on in her life just goes to show you that she's someone that is very in touch with her emotions and wants to experience everything to the full capacity so i love that we're seeing that but overall the main thing that i always tried to be was um like just like a good girl that was me growing up exactly <laughs> thought about to have to go from being in a stadium where everybody is screaming your name and everybody wants to touch you and everybody wants something from you to then walking into a dead silent apartment or hotel room I think people really underestimate like how that affects somebody that is a, a major contrast and I can't even imagine what that does to you mentally this, this is you know what like this is fine this is I just need to make a better record Reputation deserved a Grammy. I know a lot of people think that it was Taylor Swift, one of her weakest albums, but it wasn't. It was her most grown up, relatable album. What I can say is I'm kind of glad that it didn't win a Grammy because Reputation was kind of like a big middle finger to the media and how they came at her and the way that they approached like her scandals. It kind of makes sense that Reputation then would not be celebrated by the media, which I know that sounds crazy. We should want her to have a Grammy. But I'm just kind of happy that it worked out the way that it did. And then look at the way she handles it, saying, it's okay, I just have to make a better album. Reputation was a great album, Taylor! Exactly. I hate that she put so much weight on the Grammys. Especially at this point, when the Grammys has... <laughs> they're basically a joke. Is a bop. I don't care what anybody says. I stand behind that song. I think this is the first single. But why is this the first single? seeing this live on television I was young I don't remember what year this was but like I said I'm the same age as Taylor and I remember watching it live and at the time I didn't realize like 
how huge that was like I think thinking back on it I think I thought that it was like a bit it's so crazy just the mindset of being that age and watching it and not really thinking much of it but then we go on now we're gonna hear like how she feels having gone through that and how that shaped so much of the rest of her career look at her she's so uncomfortable now she feels like like the whole place is like I was sitting on stage and a mockery really excited of her. because it's shame on whoever did not drag that man off the stage. I, I don't know him and I've never met him so President Obama calling Kanye West a jackass. So I can name you 10 jackass. or 15 people. The whole crowd booing is a pretty formative experience. Yeah. How humiliating. Who doesn't eat burritos? Um, I didn't ever eat burritos until like two years ago. Niche. I don't eat burritos either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had them, but I don't eat them. She got cancer several years ago. She's my favorite person. Oh, look at the chair. Ice for my wine if you want any? Yeah. This would cause me to go into like a real shame, like hate spiral. This. I was like, nope, we don't do that anymore. She looks we do like not do that anymore woman. because How sad. it's better to look to think you look fat than I, I think that Taylor Swift, she is annoying. She's too bad. She's too skinny. It bothers me. She's too skinny. It bothers me. Imagine being so bothered by someone else's body. How do you publicly go on air and say that another woman's body being too skinny, being too anything bothers you like imagine being that person and all her model friends like come on come on there's so much i could say about this like i'll just touch really quick on the time when demi lovato said that she sees nothing in taylor swift's squad that is relatable um and basically talking about her weight when demi has had her own issues there is no difference in having that conversation about somebody who is quote unquote skinny versus having that conversation about somebody who is fat. It, this is, the whole thing is ridiculous. And now people trying to defend what Demi said back then because Taylor Swift has come out in this documentary and said essentially that she had an eating disorder. They're using that as an argument to defend somebody talking about another woman's weight. The whole thing is just bullshit. I just wanted to show the legs because as I was telling you ahead of time, you're gonna walk home with more than maybe just a trophy tonight. I think lots of men. I'm not gonna walk home with any men tonight. Guys, I had to change the angle a bit because the camera kept get going in and out of focus. So we're gonna get right back into it. Taylor on the guitar is the best color. Even though it was really horrible, I was happy. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about the Reputation album. You think that it's like this big middle finger to the media, which it is, which is what I said earlier. But at the same time, it's like about her little bubble amidst the chaos. So at the end of the day, like she said, it's actually a love story. If you listen hard enough, if you are focused enough, it is a love story. And I love that in an album that feels so chaotic and so like, like it addresses the media. At the end of the day, it's really about like the peace that she found during all of that in this new relationship. These are my favorite things to watch from Taylor Swift. The way these two bounce off of each other. Something. It clicks. Yeah, I mean, I took the money. Took the money in the bag and I stole the keys. That was the last time I ever saw me. That was the last time I ever saw me. As a side note, by the way, how many artists can disappear for a really long time and then come back and have a sold out stadium? That's incredible. That says something about her storytelling. If 
you're not a fan of Taylor Swift, I'm sure you're not watching this video at this point, but just in case you aren't, just to put it out there, Taylor Swift is, I think, one of the only artists, I could be wrong, but most artists, when they do meet and greets, you have to pay like a crazy amount of money for the VIP tickets to go and do the meet and greet. Taylor Swift has never sold meet and greet tickets. She handpicks each person that she gets to meet at her concert. So that makes it extra special to be able to meet her. Brendan Yuri is one of the most talented male artists, I think, ever. Into the Unknown from the Frozen 2 soundtrack, his voice. Oh, you sound fucking great. I want to know where the other cats are. Do they have their own backpacks? These are, these are answers I need to know. Part of the fabric of being a country artist is don't force your politics on people. That's true. That is country artists get us. it worse than anybody else. These three women have been the lady things of pop and country. Callow, foolish women who deserve to be slapped around. Absolutely. Absolutely. What the fuck? You're out in hell. They get to find Paula's back. I love hearing where it starts and where it ends up. I love it. I love it so much. And Joel and Taylor, Jack and Taylor. That she never has to work with anybody else again. They make magic together. Why don't you stand further away from him? Why the fuck does it matter? This is with seven witnesses in a photo. What happens when you get raped and it's your word against his? People don't want to hear it, but she said it. I think about her mom it's all the now. time and how it must feel to see your child like go through all that stuff. Is that, that if you're a gay couple, or even if you look like a gay couple, you should be allowed to be kicked out of the rest of my Really? It's barbaric. Basic human rights. 5,051,308 Hopefully they will be educated voters. I wish I didn't feel like there's a better version of me out there. Everybody else is running. I wish I never felt like it. I wish I didn't feel like there's a better First version skating. of myself out there. I keep looking down. Everyone's a shiny new toy for like two years. That is really true. I was just listening to a podcast yesterday where they were talking about for some reason the music industry is really young. It really caters to the young artists and as soon as they start to get older, people stop listening to their music. Like if you think about the greats and you think about when they were at their peak like a Britney Spears or a Madonna or all these people that at one point it's all you heard about. They get a little bit older, someone younger, newer, fresher comes out and then you stop listening to their new albums later on in life. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. This is probably one of my last opportunities as an artist to grasp onto that kind of success. That's sad. So, like that. I guess Tay Tay didn't have that much sway sway. Okay, Dad. <laughs> That's how oh, you know a good, a good songwriter. She's writing about an election. If she can write a song about that. That's how you know she's a storyteller. I want to still have a sharp pen and a thin skin and an open heart. take that song and really apply it to a whole lot else so it really fit obviously the theme of the documentary there are so many things that I could say about this so many things I don't know why my camera keeps going in and out of focus um, but the one thing I will say is that I never felt bored and I was kind of waiting for that like oh I got things to do I need to get up and get moving and I did not feel that with this I could have watched two more hours of that I think that in the media media sources that clearly don't like Taylor, they immediately took to this like this is a pity party, it is Taylor Swift trying to create a PR um, move to like help her reputation, whatever, like all the things that they said about it. I didn't feel like that. Yes, I could see moments of the documentary where they could pull that from, but I actually think whether it was her choice or 
you know, the editing behind the documentary or the producing, whatever it was, I could feel, I felt like she could have dove even deeper into topics, but they chose to not make it about that. Like, that's what kept it from being a pity party. She touched on it, this is how I felt, this is how things shaped me in the future, or this is what I was thinking and how I ended up here, but they didn't go so in depth that it felt like the artist was like desperate for you to understand them. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I wish that there were a little bit more of the songwriting process, but I mean, that's pretty much what I expected to get. I like that they discussed politics. Um, I wish they would have gone a little bit into, like she talked about in an interview about how, you know, at that point in her life, that stage in her life, that she felt like if she would have came out in support of Hillary Clinton, it wouldn't have been effective just because of how the media was attacking her at that point. However, I could see how that was already in an interview, so I don't know that it would make sense to also include it in the documentary, but it would have been a nice thing to add for people that don't necessarily follow Taylor Swift and maybe didn't read that interview. I also love how she touches on the relationship. There are some artists that completely just like they don't show any of it. They're not even acknowledging that it's there. They're like, we're talking about the music, we're talking about the um, the the uh, issues, but we're not going. We're going to pretend that that's not there. But she didn't do that. She said, "Hey, I'm letting you know that you know I was falling in love. I'm in love. I'm in this really comfortable place. But we chose between the two of us to keep that private. So she's hinting at it, showing you that it's there, but she's not putting her privacy out there. And I know." that a lot of people were really, really hoping for, you know, more scenes with Joe in the documentary, but I just don't think it's necessary, and I don't think that she should. I like, as much as I would love to see, like, their dynamic and what they're like together, I want nothing more than for her to have this private, intimate relationship. I think she deserves that. And with that, I feel like we are definitely seeing a we're seeing Taylor go from one career to a totally different career. And I don't want to spend all day talking about that. I could go really in depth with it. But I say that, like, I don't think that she's going to slow down. I think she's going to have success for many more years. She's really realizing that my, like, the peak of my career has already passed. However, I still want to do this and I want to make an impact. And I feel like she's going to keep releasing projects that do that but I don't think she's seeking the same. I actually, I know, I mean, she said it. She's not seeking that same kind of career at this point. And so unfortunately for us, I think that means we are gonna see less of her and not in like some big dramatic way, but she's definitely not gonna be in our face every week, every month, like she has in the past. I think we're gonna see her when she wants us to see her. Okay guys, I was in the middle of a train of thought whenever I got a call from my kid's school. I had to run out for an emergency, but I'm back to finish up my thoughts. The train of thought that I was, I was on is kind of like, so in the industry, you have artists like Beyonce. And Beyonce is obviously hugely successful. She's hugely admired and respected. But at the same time, she's kind of, what's the word? She's kind of like an enigma. Even when Beyonce is committed and contractually obligated to a project, she doesn't tend to promote that project. So you see her talent and her art in a film, but you don't see much else from her. You see what she wants you to see, which is usually like once a year at the new year, she will post a bunch of photos throughout the year and you feel like you really get a glimpse into her life. And then you have artists who are like Tim McGraw. Maybe this is a poor example, but Tim McGraw, let's say. He lives a relatively normal, semi-private life. He has a wife and a family that he is very dedicated to and spends a lot of time making them a priority. But every once in a blue moon, every few weeks, every few months, whatever, you get a sit down interview with him or he's attached to a project where he kind of talks about his life and he talks about his love of his wife and he talks about you know how proud he is of his children and what they have going on. So you see him enough to know kind of what's going on with him, to feel like you know him, but he's not completely out of the limelight like Beyonce. And I feel like Taylor Swift is at the point in her career, she is 30 years old, she's at that point where she's becoming like a Tim McGraw. She's not gonna be a Beyonce, she doesn't wanna be a Beyonce, she wants to be able to write and connect to her fans and have conversations with them and feel engaged and she really appreciates and enjoys that interaction with her fans, 
but she's not going to be out here like, I don't know, the likes of Ariana Grande, who right now is so out there, like always putting out everything that's going on. I mean, you know everything about her life. She's putting it out on Instagram. She's doing interviews. She's touring. Like, she's everywhere. Taylor Swift at one point was that, but at this point in her career, she is moving towards the Tim McGraw of it all. And so I think, you know, that's unfortunate for us. We're going to see less of her. We will probably get less projects from her because she's going to be a little more intentional about her time and about her energy and where, what her message is and where she wants to put that, where that all fits in but it's gonna benefit us because she's gonna have a longer standing career people aren't gonna get overly sick of her they're gonna appreciate whenever she comes out and releases stuff and she's still gonna roll out albums and it's gonna be great but I'm excited to see where her career goes from there I have a cat behind my back so yeah I think this documentary was it came at the perfect time it came at a point where she's trying to tell us guys I want to pull back a little bit I live a little bit more of a private life but I want to get to give you an insight into what is going on with me the thoughts that I've been having what I want to do in the future it just really felt like like the end of an era it kind of felt like it felt like she was wrapping up this like hugely chaotic like overstimulated era and now we're moving into the more mature, more self-aware Taylor. And I think if the media focused more attention on that instead of, oh, it was a pity party, I think they would be getting it right. But that's it. That's my reaction. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is going to be a bitch to edit and I'm not going to explain why. Just know that there are a lot of moving parts. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.